The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Fathers and mothers of America, Upon the training you give your children today depends the future of America. Our system of free enterprise, personal liberty, and democracy cannot exist without educated and enlightened citizens. In about 14 minutes, our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, will have some helpful suggestions for parents. If you wish to equip your children to take advantage of all the opportunities the future offers, don't miss this important message. Tonight's FBI file, The Curious Coin Collector. As August 14th, 1945 crept onto the pages of history, the White House announced that the shooting in World War II had come to an end. A victorious end that saw America and her allies triumph over tyranny. Once again, this nation had managed to protect its basic liberties. A wise prophet once said that eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. For liberty, Freedom and democracy are not prizes that are won by a people and put on a shelf. No people ever win permanent possession of these prizes. For liberty, freedom, and democracy are given only to those who first fight to win them and then keep fighting to protect them. Tonight's file opens in a photographic studio located in a shabby frame house in one of the poorer sections of a large Midwestern city. The proprietor of this establishment, one Arthur Belton, is just greeting a newly arrived customer. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, what can I do for you? You are the proprietor? Yes. Mr. Arthur Belton? That's right. Good. Are you uh, interested in some photographs? Uh, what uh, do you charge? For yourself? Yes. Four for ten dollars. A dozen for twenty-five. You have your choice. Mr. Benton, uh, I'm quite satisfied with your rates. I'd like to leave a deposit. Here. Deposit of a penny. I'm sorry, mister. What do you mean? I'm not taking those anymore. But I was told... You were told wrong. Oh, Arthur. Arthur. Uh, yes, Erna? I'm mailing out these copies of that wedding yesterday. Does each member of the family... Oh, excuse me. I, I didn't realize you were busy. Oh, well, that's all right, Erna. He's just leaving. You are sending me away? Yes. The verräterisches Schweinsee. Wait a minute. What is this, Arthur? Who is this man? Erna, keep out of this, please. He called you a treacherous swine. Let me have my penny. Just a minute. Let me see the coin. Did you bring this here? Yes. You presented it to my husband? To him, yes. Arthur, you were turning him away? Erna, I asked you to keep out of this. Oh, no. The war is over. That has nothing to do with our friendship for those who carry this coin. What is your name? Spangler. Karl Spangler. Are you in trouble? Yes. Come in the back and tell us your story. Erna! I bid you welcome, Mr. Spangler. Some ten days after the arrival of the mysterious visitor at the photographic shop, 
The whereabouts of this same man became a matter of great interest to Special Agent Jim Taylor at the local field office of the FBI. Oh, Jim. Oh, hello, Ross. Boss tells me I've been assigned to the case you're working on. Well, good. How far have you gotten with it? You're right in at the beginning. That's fine. In fact, here's Exhibit A right here. This blue denim shirt. Well, I'd say the first thing we should do is have it laundered, huh? I don't think all the laundering in the world would erase this PW on the back. Oh? Where'd the shirt come from? It was found in an empty freight car out in the yard. When? Just this morning. How about the owner? The car's been standing idle for ten days. It came in from the west. That gives him a pretty good start, huh? Yes, but we've got one break. I know who this PW is. Well, how'd you find out? This laundry mark here on the shirt. I checked it in our circulars on missing prisoners of war. Oh, I see. He's Lieutenant Carl Spangler, former member of the Africa Corps. Escaped from a California prison camp some 15 days ago. Here's the circular on him. Thanks. A very complete description. Yeah, he shouldn't be hard to identify. If he's still here. Don't forget our lead is 10 days old. You mean he might have been just passing through? That's it, Ross. Oh, this is Exhibit B. That crumpled piece of paper? It was found in the pocket of this shirt. Any writing on it? Well, nothing visible. But look at these creases here. Mm -hmm. Appears to have been wrapped around a small coin of some sort. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm asking the laboratory to check with a parallel light beam for indented marks. To see if the coin left an impression on the paper? That's it. Then we start looking in a city of three million people for one man who has probably already left town. Good morning, Anna. Good morning, Carl. Did you sleep well? Very well, thank you. Sit down. Your breakfast is all ready. <laughs> you are spoiling me, Anna. Here's your orange juice. Oh, fine. Uh, where's your dear husband up front in the studio? No, he went out. Poor Arthur. Why do you say that? Well, I would judge by his attitude these past ten days that he's not very happy about my being here. Does that bother you? Not in the least. My only concern is you. What do you mean? How you feel about me. Will you have your toast dry or buttered? <laughs> dry, please. Here you are. And your coffee. Thank you, my dear. Mmm. Excellent coffee. I'm glad. Arthur always says it's too strong. Uh, I have an idea that many things are too strong for Arthur. <laughs> uh, how did you two ever get together? He was a friend of my father's. He came to meetings at our house before the war. Political meetings? Yes. Arthur was very active for our cause. Then why did he turn me away? My friend in the prison camp who gave me the penny and told me to present it here said he could be trusted. That was true. Why did he change? Because he wasn't being paid any longer. We lost the war. Remember? Uh, tell me, Anna. Yes? Why do you stay on with him? Oh, I don't know. Well, do you love him? No. Then why? Please, come. Anna, come here. No. I said come here. What is it? I think that there was a very good reason for you not leaving Arthur. <laughs> he did not know it, of course, but you've been waiting for me. Carl. And now that I have... Oh, is that you, Arthur? Yes, sir, now. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. I've just been talking about you. With who? A mutual friend. Arthur, what is this? Now, don't be alarmed, my dear. I've been to visit Max Sebring. Oh? Who is he? A former member of our organization here. I told him you were staying with us. Why? He used to arrange shelter and transportation for people like you. Oh. He still does, Erna. He's going to take charge of Carl. What do you mean? I regret to say that he's leaving here. What? Max is transporting him to a farm some hundred miles upstate. Just a minute. I believe I have something to say about where I go. I'm afraid you haven't. Now, you understand an order, Carl. This is an order from Max. I thought you'd left the organization. I have. I only contacted Max as a favor to you. <laughs> How kind. So, Carl, you'll be at the corner of 12th and Main Street at 8.30 tonight. <laughs> 
Max will pick you up in his car. Well, Ross, here's the latest flash on Exhibit B. Piece of paper? That's it. Was it loaded with invisible writing? No, not a trace of any. How about the coin angle? It was wrapped around one, all right. Foreign coin? No, an Indian head penny. What? Why would anyone want to keep a penny wrapped up? So he wouldn't spend it. Oh, wait a no, minute. No, no, I mean it, Ross. I think that Indian head was of great value to him. As a rare coin? No, as an open sesame. I don't get it. Well, I may be way off base on this one. But do you remember back before the war when we had our hands full of the boys from the Bund? Yeah. Well, the key men in that setup had various means of identifying themselves. Sometimes they used an old coin. You remember now? Yeah, of course. Well, our escaped PW could be using that same system. And is being sheltered by one of the old Bundes? Could be, yes. Oh, excuse me. Taylor speaking. Mr. Taylor, the girl at your switchboard told me I should talk to you. Oh, who is this, please? That doesn't matter. I understand you're the FBI man who was looking for an escaped German prisoner of war. Yes, that's right. If you wish to pick him up, he'll be at the corner of 12th and Main Street at 8.30 tonight. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. Hello? Hello? He hung up. Well, what was that all about? An anonymous tip on where we could pick up our PW. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. The informer said that he'd be at the corner of 12th and Main Street at 8.30 tonight. Think it's a good tip? I don't know. We'll follow up on it anyway. Meantime, let's dig through the files and get a list of the ex-leaders of the Bund. You all dressed? Yeah, it's on you. It's too tall. Yeah, it looks fine. Has there not come back yet? No. I wanted to say goodbye to her. Well, she'll be here before you go. And we still have almost an hour. This place I'm being sent to, uh, what's it like? It's a beautiful farm. You'll enjoy it very much. Who lives there? An old couple. I know them. Charming people. I'd rather be here. Now, you're a soldier, Carl. As I said before, you must obey orders. I know. Who's that? Me, Erna. Now, we're in here, dear. Carl was afraid you wouldn't return in time. What delayed you? I went calling. Really? On whom? Max Sebring. Erna. I spoke to his wife. She told me that Max has been out of town for two weeks. Why, why, that can't be. I just saw him this morning. He's in California. His wife spoke to him on the phone out there an hour ago. Well, that's impossible. This is the man who was supposed to have ordered me away? Yes, Carl. Well, I don't understand. I do. You're being thrown to the wolves. Now, see Father, here. you didn't speak to Max or anyone else. You just wanted Carl out of here. That's a lie. Then suppose you give us the truth. I have. He probably has the FBI or the police on that corner right now waiting to pick you up. I tell you, Max is in town. Then call him on the phone. Go ahead, call him. I... No. Then this was a trick? Yes. I knew it. Oh, look, Erna, I had to do it. I didn't want any part of him in the first place. I was through with everything he stood for. And then to have to watch you day after day, waiting on him, catering to him, fawning over him. Knowing you were falling in love with him right under my nose, I... I had to do it. But you didn't get away with it. He's still getting out of here. I'm calling the FBI. Oh, no, you're not. (coughs) Well, darling, I guess I stay. Return in just a moment to tonight's FBI file. Now, three questions and answers on the value of education. First question. How much better chance is a college-trained man or woman to become a leader in business, the professions, or the arts than the individual who doesn't go to college? Are the odds two to one, five to one, ten to one? Taking who's who in America as a measure of leadership, the odds in favor of the college-trained man or woman are 87 to one. Right now, I know that thousands of listeners to this program are saying to themselves, my children are going to have those 87 to 1 odds in their favor. Well, if that's the way you feel, then you'll certainly be interested in an equitable educational fund. Second question, 
What is an equitable educational fund? It is a life insurance plan that includes these important features. The Equitable Educational Fund makes sure that money for education will be ready when your child is ready. If you die, the Educational Fund becomes fully established. If you are totally or permanently disabled, the Educational Fund continues to build up without any further payment. Educational costs are spread out over many years instead of being concentrated in a few. Last question. How much will it cost to send your son or daughter to college? That question is answered in a memorandum recently prepared for Equitable Society representatives. It tells the cost of tuition, board, and lodging in 192 leading American colleges. It summarizes the long-range opportunities open to educated men and women in 29 industries and professions, such as architecture, dentistry, engineering, chemistry, life insurance, social service, information that every parent should have. Your nearest Equitable Society representative will be glad to show his copy to any sincerely interested parent. Get in touch with him tomorrow or call the nearest Equitable Life Assurance Society office. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. -E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Curious Coin Collector. The late Adolf Hitler once boasted that Americans were a soft, decadent people, wholly unlike the Aryan Superman. Well, there is a difference between an American and a Nazi, because only a stubborn, one-track mind would refuse to admit that the Third Reich had gone down to defeat, would prefer to sit and wait for a new Hitler, a new call to arms a new chance to aid the fatherland. There are still such Nazis all over the world, and some of them, as proven by tonight's case from the files of your FBI, are right here, right here in the United States. Tonight's file continues. FBI Special Agents Taylor and Dixon, acting on the anonymous phone tip that the escaped prisoner of war they were seeking would turn up at the corner of 12th and Main Street at 8.30 that night, arrived at this destination and patiently waited. They watched the hands of a corner clock slide past 8.30, past 9, past 9.30, and creep slowly up to 10 o'clock. Well, Ross, it looks like we've been handed one. Yeah. Think we should wait any longer? No, let's get back to the car. Okay. This was somebody's idea of a joke, I suppose. I don't think so. Why not? Well, this case hasn't been publicized. Very few people know that we're looking for Carl Spangler. And how do you figure the call? Someone might just have been trying to turn him in, and it didn't work out. Oh, Ross, will you drive? Yeah, sure thing, Squab. Uh, back to the office? Yes, please. <laughs> Ross, where's that list of ex-bond members? Yeah, right, right here in my pocket. There you are. Thanks. Those two names at the bottom are the only ones who still live here in town. Sebring and Belton? That's right. I don't remember either one of them. Oh, I remember Belton, all right. Well, what's the story on him? Native-born American, mm. Nazi sympathizer, very active with the bond before the war. How about during the war? He was under surveillance... We didn't get anything on him, though. I see. These the correct addresses on both of them? I believe so, Jim. Well, it's too late to contact them tonight. We'll get on this first thing in the morning. How is he, Carl? He has regained consciousness. That's good. For a while, I was frightened. About what? Well, that you might have killed him. <laughs> I'm sure he'd appreciate your concern. <laughs> My only concern was the police. Oh. Is it safe to leave him alone in there? I have him bound and gagged. Oh, fine. What do we do now? I don't know. Obviously, we can't stay here. Then where do we go? Do you want to leave the country? Go home to Germany? Yes. <laughs> Should say not. 
Much prefer to remain here. You mean you've learned to like America? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but if I were to settle down here, oh, who knows? Someday I might be very useful to the fatherland. We both could be useful. And I repeat, where do we go? What did you do before you went into the army? Well, I was, I guess you'd call it a commercial artist. Well, then we should go to a large city, preferably in the east. Darling, what do we use for money? Oh, I don't know. How much has your husband got? Four or five thousand, but it's all in the bank in his name. Checking account? Yes, but we can't touch it, Carl. He signs the checks. I think we might persuade him to sign one for us. How? Come, let's go see him. Carl, he'll never consent to it. Perhaps he'll have to. Go ahead, Ernest. Thank you. Good evening, Arthur. Ernest and I wish to talk to you about something rather important. Shall I remove the gag? No, 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 he can hear. Arthur, we wish to go away. We need money. I understand you have several thousand in the bank. We'd like you to write us a check for the full amount. Carl, I tell you, he'll never do it. Go and get his checkbook, Ernest. I think by the time you return, he'll be ready to sign. Taylor speaking. Morning, Jim. This is Ross. Oh, good morning, Ross. I was waiting for your call. Are you ready to go calling on Belton and Sebring? No, the boss has put me on another detail. I'll be tied up on it for another couple of hours. I see. Uh, Ross, why don't you go ahead and interview them? See what you can pick up, huh? Okay. Who are you calling on first? Well, Sebring is the handiest. Belton is way up on North Main Street. Well, if I finish here in time, I'll try to meet you out there. Yes, Carl. What time does the bank open? Nine o'clock. Now, don't you think you should be getting over there? It's almost that now. I know, Carl, but I'd rather wait a while. Why? I don't want to be the first customer. They might get suspicious. Well, you said they know you there. Yes, but this is a very large check. What are you looking for? The keys to the car. You check the gas and oil when you go to the bank, huh? Yes, I told you I would. Oh, here they are. Now, tell me, Anna, does uh, Arthur have a gun? Yes. Where is it? In the dresser next to the bed. Why? I think we should bring it along with us, uh, just in case. What's that? Well, someone's come into the studio. What do we do? Go and get rid of them. But we, we don't... Do as I say. Yes? Good morning. Is Mr. Arthur Belton here? No, he isn't. Well, when will he be back? Well, I, uh, I don't know. Do you work here? I'm his wife. Oh, I see. My name is Dixon. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. Well? I'm looking for information. Perhaps you can help me. What sort of information? About a man named Spangler, an escaped prisoner of war. Yes? We have reason to believe he's here in the city. I wonder if he tried to contact your husband. I wouldn't know. You say you have no idea when he'll return? No. Very well, then I guess I'll just have to wait. Put up your hands, <gasps> Mr. FBI. Well, looks like we've finally caught up with you, Spangler. Yes. But it won't do you any good. Go to the bank, Anna. I'll take this gentleman back inside and introduce him to Arthur. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, what do you want? Well, I've been ringing the doorbell here for the past five minutes. I wanted to get into the studio. We're closed for the day. You work here, do you? Yes, we're closed, I tell you. I wanted to see Mr. Belton. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Oh? Well, there's already been one agent here to see him. Oh? I'm Mrs. Belton. My husband left here with the other agent. I see. How long ago was this? Oh, at least a half hour. Thank you very much. 
You're welcome. Close the door quickly. What's wrong? We've got to get out of here at once. Did you get the money? Yes, but there was another FBI man waiting outside of the door when I came in. Where is he now? I got rid of him. How? I told him that the other agent had already been here and had taken my husband away. I see. What did you do with the other one? He's in the bedroom with Arthur. Well, then let's get out of here. We'll use the back way. Come on. Very well. Stand where you are, both of you. Who is this? The FBI. I had an idea you'd be here, Spangler. Really? Yes. Mrs. Belton told me my partner had left with her husband a half hour ago. That didn't add up because his car is still parked two doors from this house. Now, where is my partner? In the bedroom. Is he all right? Yes. He'd better be. Go on, Superman. Lead me to him. Erna Belton was tried and convicted of harboring an escaped prisoner and sentenced to a term in the federal penitentiary. Carl Spangler was returned to the custody of the United States Army. Yes, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. And eternal vigilance might also be the motto of your FBI. For the men who comprise the Federal Bureau of Investigation are forever at work protecting your security. The wartime record of your FBI approached perfection. For despite the constant work of enemy agents, not one single piece of sabotage was ever committed within the confines of the United States. That kind of vigilance is the type that was rewarded in tonight's case. And that kind of alert watchfulness will continue to protect you, the American people, so long as there is an FBI. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Again, let me remind you to check with your Equitable Society representative about the safest and wisest investment a parent can make for his children, an Equitable Educational Fund. Without obligation, he will also show you the Equitable Society's memorandum on the costs of higher education and some of the opportunities it opens. Get in touch with your Equitable Society representative or call the nearest office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Sugar Swindler. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is written and produced by Jerry Devine. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Sugar Swindler on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.